Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Sam. I'm a foundation year two doctor working in London. Today's video is all about graduate entry medicine. Recently, I was talking to somebody who's in their 30s. Um, she wants to do graduate entry medicine, but through her research, supposedly, she concluded that the GAMSAT, which is an exam that graduates sometimes have to do for graduate entry medicine, was too hard and there was no way that she was going to be able to pass it and get into medicine. And that sort of broke my heart a little bit because the whole point I make these videos and the whole point I talk to people about medicine is hopefully to show them that it doesn't matter what background you have, it doesn't matter whether you have a degree in geography or you got three B's at A level, you medicine is still possible for you um, it's not just something that rich people do it's not that some it's not just something that clever people do and stuff I didn't think I'm clever and I did medicine <laughs> um, so it's, it's something that is definitely possible and in particular graduate entry medicine which is something that um, is becoming more popular these days um, I find I, I'm getting lots and lots of people asking me about graduate entry medicine more than before and so I thought I'd do this video just to dispel some of the myths surrounding graduate entry medicine and hopefully let you guys know that it is possible and you're not just restricted to a few universities um, around the UK. Obviously I'm going to be discussing the UK system. I know nothing about doing medicine in Europe or in America or in Australia or in Asia and if you're in those countries or if you're considering doing medicine in those countries then obviously you can do some research and you'll find out the information that you require. So first things first, graduate entry medicine is an undergraduate degree for graduate students. It's not a postgraduate degree. Postgraduate medicine is something that you do once you've qualified, once you've finished your medical degree. It's usually four years long, so it's an accelerated course, which means that you're condensing five to six years of information within four years. So you can imagine, I mean, doing medicine anyway in five years is really difficult in terms of the volume of stuff that you have to know, the volume of stuff that you have to remember. So you can imagine having four years to remember all of this material in. It's a very difficult course to be doing. The biggest misconception that I've heard about doing graduate entry medicine or GEM is that there are only four universities in the UK that allow you to do graduate entry medicine, which is completely wrong. There's so many universities that allow you to do graduate entry medicine in the UK. But there are about 10 or 12 universities that allow you to apply to graduate entry medicine. However, having said that, the entry requirements for all these universities differ and this is what narrows the choice for people. Some of the universities require you to have a science undergraduate degree that you did before and some of these universities even require you to have done some science A-levels but not all of them, hence why you need to do your research. Another misconception I've heard about doing graduate entry medicine is that you have to do the GAMSAT, which is the graduate admissions test for medical school or something. I can't remember what the um, abbreviation stands for, but that's wrong. You don't have to do the GAMSAT. Um, only specific universities ask you to do the GAMSAT. You can do the UK CAT, which is another aptitude test. Um, the UK CAT is more about reasoning, abstract reasoning, quantitative reasoning, and all that sort of thing. Whereas the GAMSAT is more science-y based, um, as far as I can see. Um, you need to know loads of physics, you need to know loads of biology and chemistry and things. Um, and so for some people, especially when you're sort of older, you haven't done this in a long, long time, and so you find it more difficult. And actually, the girl that I was talking to about graduate entry medicine was so petrified about doing GAMSAT because she looked at the revision books and things and saw the physics questions and she was like no way there is no way and I'm sure if I was to look at the GAMSAT paper now I'll think bloody hell um, I don't know I don't know how to do it because I haven't done physics in a long time um, so yeah there's a difference between the GAMSAT and the UK CAT and I highly highly suggest that you look at which universities require the GAMSAT and if you're not comfortable doing the GAMSAT then you don't have to do it you can do the UK CAT but obviously it means that you can't apply to the universities that require you to the GAMSAT obviously. Another thing that I've heard floating around is that the five-year course is not open to graduates and this is completely wrong completely wrong you can be a graduate and you can apply for the five-year course in fact I had tons and tons and tons of friends on my five-year course when I was doing medicine who were postgraduates, and so the fact that you're a graduate doesn't mean you're limited to graduate entry medicine you can still apply to the five-year course clearly the clincher here is all about funding Obviously funding a four-year course is a lot more doable than funding a five-year course, 
but there's still options that are open for you. You can apply to the student loans company for something. The NHS will be able to give you something. There are professional development loans and career development loans that are floating around, so you'll be able to pay for your degree. Obviously, I'm out here sitting pretty because my degree was 3,000 something pounds and it was a long, long time ago that I did it. I didn't have to pay the 9,000 pounds that you guys have to pay now. But even then, I personally do not think that money should be something that stops you from going to get what you want. If you want to get educated, then don't worry about the money. Things will work out. When I did my masters, I had no idea how I was going to fund this thing. Um, but I funded it in some way, you know, loans and all these other things. But I can talk about this in another video. But I don't think money should stop you from, um, you know, going and doing graduate entry medicine or, or going to do medicine in general. Um, there's so many options that are available for you, as I've already mentioned. So I think money should be down in your list of priorities, to be honest. You will make it work in some way. Obviously, the usual things about extracurricular activities, work experience, having a life outside of medicine still matters whether you're doing graduate entry medicine or not. You're going to go to interview and you're going to be asked questions about this. And I've done several videos on interviews and extracurricular activities and all that. Um, so I'll link them somewhere up here or in the description bar. Obviously, every university is different. They have different entry requirements for applying to graduate entry medicine. And depending on whether you do the GAMSAT or the UK CAT, they will have minimum scores that they need in these exams. Um, you know, GAMSAT, they'll probably ask for a 55 or whatever in in each section. As well as that, in your previous degree, you need to have achieved at least a 2-1 um, or a 2-2 if that degree was a master's degree. Some universities also have minimum A-level and GCSE requirements. So again, it's just a case of you doing some research and finding out which universities you're eligible to apply to. That's it guys. Hopefully I've dispelled some of the myths surrounding graduate entry medicine. I didn't do graduate entry medicine, so all of this is based off of information that I've received from my friends and information that I've researched by myself, and all of this is available freely on the internet. Um, check out the description bar, I'll put a ton of links to things uh, with more information for you guys, or I'll put it on my blog or somewhere, but yeah, it will be somewhere. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching guys, and I will see you on my next video. Bye.